So if you look in the disk of the Milky Way, all the stars go around the same way. It's kind of a one-way system, everything's going around in the same direction. In almost every galaxy you look at, that's what you find. This one is kind of unique because it's actually exactly 50-50. There's half the stars going one way, half the stars going the other way. We're in the Virgo cluster, so the nearest big cluster of galaxies. It's one of these galaxies called a lenticular galaxy because it looks like a lens or an S0 galaxy. So it's one of these things which has a disk, which we're clearly seeing more or less edge on, which is why it's very skinny like this, but doesn't have spiral arms or any of the features we typically associate with the spiral galaxies. The original discovery was something that Vera Rubin and her collaborators discovered in the early 1990s. She was doing a big study of all the galaxies in the Virgo cluster. What they were doing in their survey is they were taking things called long slit spectra. So basically they were taking, putting a slit of a spectrograph along the galaxy and measuring spectra all along that slit. And what you expect to find for a galaxy like this is you expect to see absorption lines due to the various chemical elements that the stars are made of, but the absorption lines are all Doppler shifted a bit, that some of them are shifted towards the red end of the spectrum, which means that those stars are moving away from you. Some are shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum, so that means those stars are moving towards you. So what you expect to see in a galaxy like that, if it's an edge-on disk, is it's either rotating one way or the other. So what you'd expect is all the stars on one side are red-shifted and all the stars on the other side are blue-shifted, or vice versa, depending on which way it's rotating. So what you'd expect to find is that the dark bands, for example, here is one of these dark bands, you'd expect it to be shifted slightly towards the blue end of the spectrum at one end and shifted slightly towards the red end of the spectrum on the other side. So you'd expect to see a kind of an S shape in there. And what you actually see is not these S shapes, but if you look closely, you can see there's one going that way and there's one going that way as well. So there's kind of an X shape. And that means that as well as the disk rotating one way, which is what gives you this signature here, the disk is also rotating the other way, which gives you this signature here. And because those lines are kind of a roughly equal strength, what you can sort of infer from that is that this is a very strange disk in that half the stars are going around one way and half the stars are going around the other way. The obvious first question is, well, don't the stars just bash into each other if they're doing that? What you've got to bear in mind is that a galaxy is mostly empty space. So again, if we come back to the Milky Way for a second, if you made the sun this big, then the next nearest star would be about 50 or 60 kilometers away. So that means that really you've got one lot of empty space and another lot of empty space with a few stars dotted around in it. The simplest idea the sort of most obvious thing to think of is, well, maybe the way you make a galaxy like that has these two counter-rotating disks is you just have one normal disk like this and another normal disk like this, and they just crash into each other, and they end up merging to form one of these systems where half the stars go one way, half the go the other way. Unfortunately, that doesn't work, because what you find is, if you start doing simulations of crashing disks into each other, is as soon as you start smashing them into each other, that destroys the disk structure, and actually you end up forming a thing like an elliptical galaxy. So that's where we came in. One of the things that's happened since Vera Rubin first discovered this galaxy is that we've got much better at actually analyzing the properties of spectra. And in particular, we can look at the strength of different absorption lines in spectra and use that to figure things out about the properties of the stars that that population is made of. So that's what we did, is we took some more very, very deep spectra of this particular galaxy, and what we found is that the absorption lines in one stellar population are different from the absorption lines for the stars going around the other way. And in particular, those hydrogen lines are much stronger in one of the disks than they are in the other, from which we can infer that that disk has to be much younger than the stars that are going around the other way. What we were able to show is that actually the two populations have to be different, one of them's younger than the other, and that's exactly what you'd expect if an old disk formed and then gas started flowing in, orbiting in the other direction, which would then form a second generation of stars which would seem younger than the stars that were already there. So probably the likely scenario here is this was a disk galaxy that formed, formed with a whole bunch of stars all orbiting around one way, perhaps a little bit of gas left over from the stars that are orbiting that way. Later in its life, gas started flowing in in the other direction, so rotating around in the other direction. The first thing that happens is that any gas that's coming around this way will bash into gas that's going around the other way, because gas, unlike stars, is very collisional. So actually, it'll smack into it, that'll all fall into the middle, it'll remove what, you know, sort of sweep up what gas there was left over from the first generation. Then if you keep feeding in gas in that direction, you'll form a new disk of gas, which is rotating in the opposite direction to the stars, and then over time, that new disk of gas will start forming stars of its own, and eventually it'll use up all the gas and form a second stellar disk that rotates in the opposite direction. I think probably the reason why this was the first one that was discovered is that when you do end up with exactly half the stars going either way, it's very easy to find. If it were only like 10%, you might not notice. So actually you could have you know, all the stars and you'd, you'd analyze it and you'd, you wouldn't notice the fact that there's a small fraction that seemed to be going around the other way. If the disks were very different sizes, so if there were a tiny little disk in the middle going around one way and most of the stars were going the other way, you might not notice that either. So probably 
you know, this was the first one that was discovered because it's the most blatant example. Subsequently, we now know there's probably at least half a dozen other galaxies where there's at least some stars going around one way and some going around the other way. So it's not a unique system. It does happen from time to time. But of course, that's half a dozen out of the many, what, tens of thousands of galaxies of those kind of sizes that we know about. So it, clearly, whatever the process is that makes this happen, it's very unusual. It's not the common way of making a galaxy.